Hello boys and girls, fathers and mothers, grandpas and grandmas, and all of you great YouTube viewers. This is Kenny Erzy, and today is my first YouTube, and I'm going to discuss what it means to be a good person. I'm a great fan of the amazing YouTube. There are so many programs available. I've learned dance on YouTube. Uh, I've, I've learned how to speak languages. I have also seen great comedy. What original talents and personalities. But today I, I want to step into YouTube because I want to share some ideas with you. And this idea comes from reflecting upon what it means to be a good person. What does it mean? I mean, we're not talking about a nice person. We're talking about a good person. In life, we have many ups and downs, highs and lows, and there's mistakes and transgressions. And as human beings, we sometimes reflect upon what it means to be a good person. We want to improve ourselves. So I, th I thought I might read a little philosophy, some ethics, a little psychology. And I found out that a lot of the philosophers are great. They get into very, very detailed abstract arguments. But when it comes to practicality, uh, they're a little lacking. So I thought it might be important if I tried to come up with something that we could all use for everyday living. So I'm happy to say I believe there are five guidelines that we can put into practice if we're diligent and if we're mindful and if we're conscious of it, we could actually become good persons. So. What are these five guidelines? These are empathy, morality, civility, happiness, and wisdom. These are all accessible to us all. Uh, now, I'm not saying we're, we'll ever be perfect. No one ever is. But the good thing is we can connect to that good person within us. And this good person can come out and it's never too late. So let's start with empathy. Guideline one, empathy. Cultivate empathy. What is the meaning of empathy? It means understanding and respecting the feelings and the views of others. And it's putting yourself in someone else's shoes. But the golden rule of empathy uh, was first formulated some 2,500 years ago. And it was none other than Confucius, who said, the central aspect of all his ethics is this, do not do unto others what you would not want others to do unto you. Very, very simple. So you don't like people to cheat you. You don't like people to lie to you you don't like people to bully you, then don't do it to others. Don't cheat others. Don't lie and don't bully others. Uh, so the Bible also has a positive spin on the same golden rule. And it says, do unto others as you will have others do unto you. So do you like people to be kind to you? You want people to love you? To respect you, to give to you, then do unto others this. Give a little kindness, a little love, a little bit of uh, giving. It wouldn't hurt. Now, so the beauty of this positive and negative golden rule is that there are no special rules here. You don't need any special training or rules to put it into practice. The don't do's reside within you. And what you like others to do upon you reside within you. So the 
the reciprocity here, the golden rule for others to put it into effect to each other is such that we don't need to get into our individual differences. And it just dawned on me that if everyone were to inculcate this golden rule as children at an early age, we could most likely cut down on bullying by some 80% in all schools. So teachers, let's incorporate this into the curriculum. It's time. Now, let's go to aspect number two, guideline morality. Cultivate morality. Let's activate or put into play your own moral conscience as an inner guide. Now, that means we don't need to read a hundred books of philosophy or ethics. Uh, we, we don't need to spend all our time delving into abstruse arguments. And it doesn't mean joining a moral majority that constrains you, that tells you you can't do this, you can't do that, you must do this. Uh, we're not talking about that. I think the moral conscience that I'm talking about is just your common sense of what is right and wrong. This is really good enough. In other words, cultivate no regrets before you act. Uh, keep unhealthy and depraved thoughts out. Your own sense of morality will serve you well. So what we want to cultivate is this idea of a clear conscience with your moral inner sense watching over you. And of course we will make mistakes, but own up to them. Ask for, a, ask for a forgiveness. Apologize. And if others also transgress you, forgive them as well. So I think this moral approach is important because we haven't given it much thought in our everyday living. Number three, civility. What is cultivating civility? You know, as social beings, we're born to live together in a civil society. Civil society is now becoming much more global. We are now cosmopolitan. Uh, there are multiple cultures. We learn from other cultures. We're beginning to see that we are not the center of the universe. And so what happens is arrogance will give way to toleration. But for our immediate purposes here, how do we become more civil? Well, let's start by toning down our ego. Add a little humility. I, me, myself attitudes foster a sense of aggressiveness and selfishness. We have enough protections under our great constitution to protect our individual rights. I think it's time for us to now think in terms of cooperating with others. So why not cooperate instead of compete? Why not, why not tolerate instead of be overly judgmental of others? Why not become less controlling and live and let live? And we should cultivate a little propriety in our social relations and in our dialogue with one another. Profanity, rant, rage, and threats. Th these are detriments to a civil society. Reason, persuasion, and understanding are the way to proceed to resolve issues. I believe, as a social being, we can become a much more cooperative society and much happier. And that brings me to our number four aspect of the guideline, which is happiness. Cultivate happiness. Now, 
happiness is elusive in today's crazed, materialized culture of excessive ones. Now, I know there's other reasons why a lot of people aren't happy, but I think one major overriding problem is this status envy. This status envy is perpetrated by a lot of commercials, and it's ingrained in a lot of our society. So I think it's time for us to step back and instead of seeing status envy on television, seeing status envy occur when we see our friends flaunt their designer wares or when our relatives get ahead financially, step back and ask yourself, what is the most important aspect of living? Well, it's happiness. And happiness, believe me, is not bought. Happiness is something that comes from the inner self. And love and friends can help you achieve that. I, I really think that if we were to have all the material things in the world but no friends, we'd be quite miserable. So remember James Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life. In the last scene, when his brother Harry gives a toast to him, he says, to the richest man in this town, my brother, George Bailey. Well, at the brink of financial disaster, all the friends in the community came together and provided George with the friendship that he needed and the funds to survive this disaster. So no man is a failure if you have friends. So I think this is something we should begin to focus on, happiness with friends. Finally, guideline number five, wisdom. Wisdom comes with experience, and it is the ability to act wisely after learning from the past. Wisdom grows if we utilize it, if we nourish it. And if we use it to take stock and reflect on each stage of our life, it's never too late to do right. Learn the biographies of great people who have overcome their bad habits and their follies. Wisdom is the tried and true path to a better person. And wisdom comes with age. That's why I left it for the number five. Well, that concludes our discussion about what it means to be a good person. I've provided some how to be a good person with five simple guidelines. But you do need to have honesty. Uh, when you approach this, you have to be open with yourself. You have to be conscious of it, and you have to practice it, and hopefully you can cultivate it. And it doesn't matter your economic status. It doesn't matter your educational attainment, nor your age. Just be mindful that we can all be good. So let's cultivate these five guidelines, and what are they? Empathy, morality, civility, happiness, and wisdom. And once a year, do a summing up, and come up with ideas and share it with me. Add to my list of five, or amplify what you think it means to be a good person and I will learn from you. Um, now let's go to it. Make that connection with that good person within us all. Well this concludes commentary one. Commentary two would deal with the good citizen in today's 21st millennium. Well I hope you will recommend this video to other people. I look forward to positive feedback and if criticisms are warranted, I, I will learn from all. So thank you so much and have a good day.